Well, hi everyone. Brace yourself. I've got a video about a Rhode Island bridge that is not the Washington Bridge. And today I'm talking about the Mount Hope Bridge. Tim White with WPRI broke a story last month. I'm recording this video on August 8th, 2025 about how a inspection was completed of this bridge in the fall of 2024. And he had requested a copy of that inspection report and the Rhode Island Bridge and Transit Authority refused to give him a copy of those reports, citing Department of Homeland Security concerns. So I'm gonna go over what the issues were and more importantly, I have a solution, a path forward that can satisfy the public here, I think, for their important need to know about what they're driving over every day. So this is the location I'm referring to, the Mount Hope Bridge. It's a suspension bridge spanning the Mount Hope Bay in eastern Rhode Island. And it's at one of the narrowest gaps in the Narragansett Bay. And it connects the Rhode Island towns of Portsmouth and Bristol. The bridge was completed in 1929. Total length of 6,138 feet, width of 28 feet. And it's a pretty high bridge, 285 feet. Now I looked at the bridge rating in the National Bridge Inventory and it's listed as being in fair condition. And they're getting ready to close the Mount Hope Bridge from August 14th to August 18th for resurfacing of the bridge deck. Now, RIPTA has jurisdiction over main bridges, the Mount Hope Bridge, Saconet River Bridge, Jamestown Verrazano Bridge, and the Newport Pell Bridge. Let's just look at this Google Earth image. As we zoom in, you can see the patchwork nature of the existing deck. It's a pretty rough ride from what I understand. This bridge carries about 20,000 vehicles per day. So not nearly the high traffic volume that you have for say the Washington Bridge at well over 100,000 vehicles a day, but it's important nonetheless. So as I mentioned, Tim White did this story last month. There are private consultants working for RIPTA that perform these inspections. And again, it's not unusual. There's certain bridges across the country that are considered at risk for bad actors, usually major bridges over waterways, navigable waterways. And uh, as an example, the key bridge here in Baltimore, Maryland, as you know, collapsed in March of 2024 due to an impact from an ocean going cargo ship hitting one of the piers on its main span. And I discovered that Maryland officials had commissioned a study at the end of 2002 evaluating the risks to their signature bridge projects throughout the state. And after the main span of the Francis Scott Key Bridge had collapsed, I submitted a public records request for these studies and they redacted them in their near entirety. It was completely worthless, citing Homeland Security issues. And I'm thinking, you're redacting a report for a bridge that's sitting in the Patapsco River? But it just goes to show you, you know, these days it seems like the government knows way more about us than we know about the government. But I think there's a way to satisfy the public here about the condition of this bridge and whether it's safe to travel and what would it take to either make it safe or continue to be safe to cross this bridge. And I'm not saying the bridge is unsafe. I'm just saying we don't know the condition of the bridge. And I looked at who has the ultimate responsibility for the inspection of these RIPTA bridges in the state of Rhode Island. And it turns out it's Rhode Island DOT based on the research I've performed from the 23 Code of Federal Regulations 650.303. says, in practice, they delegate the actual inspection to RIPTA who has a third party contract, but ultimately RIDOT's responsible for the bridge to be inspected. Now that's bad news, right? Because we know the whole saga with the Washington Bridge started out with private consulting firms performing the inspection under contract to Rhode Island DOT. However, the bridge inspection manual says very clearly, and this is consistent with federal regulations, that the ultimate responsibility for conducting these inspections lies with the Rhode Island DOT. Well, we know Rhode Island DOT was relying on these inspection reports. They weren't providing enough of their own oversight, in my opinion. And they end up suing 
consultants and contractors who were involved with the Washington Bridge for the last 10 years. So you have RIPTA coming in and telling people, hey, sorry, we can't release these reports because the Department of Homeland Security won't let us do it, but trust us, everything's okay. When the public knows, based on the experience with the Washington Bridge, they can't trust Rhode Island DOT, who, again, has ultimate responsibility for performing these bridge inspections. So what is the path forward here? It's unlikely that RIPTA will be able to release even a redacted form of the inspection reports. I don't expect that to happen. I don't think they want it to happen. So instead, I propose that they form what's called a board of consultants. And it's common in engineering practice, if you have a particularly challenging project, a project that involves great expertise or other important considerations, that you obtain the services of highly respected, highly renowned engineers who specialize in the given area that you need support in and bring them in as a consultant and you can have multiple consultants and you call it a board of consultants. And I think that's exactly what needs to happen here. RIPTA needs to go out and find people, preferably engineering consultants who don't work in the state of Rhode Island so that there's a, no apparent conflict of interest. And they come in and evaluate all the inspection reports they perhaps make site visits. They review all available information about design, construction, and maintenance of the Mount Hope Bridge and write a summary letter. They can write a letter in such a way that it doesn't divulge very specific vulnerabilities, but they could summarize key points. For example, point one, in their opinion, is the bridge safe enough to allow continued operation, traffic over the bridge on a daily basis? They, they could clearly say whether they agreed with that or not. They could also indicate if that wasn't the case, what would it take in general to get the bridge into a safe condition if, if that were in fact possible. So basically very high level opinions about the viability of using this bridge now and in the future. And again, they could do that with the board of consultants and they get out of this tug of war if one is actually going on about trying to release portions of the inspection report that's subject to being held very tightly by Department of Homeland Security. So I'll continue to follow this story if further developments uh, appear. With that, I want to thank those of you who've contributed to Buy Me a Coffee. That's a great way to support this channel. I certainly also want to thank channel members and those of you who've contributed to Super Thanks. So please stay tuned for future videos, everyone.